All right, so now we're going to talk about the lectin pathway and the classical pathway of complement activation. And a lot of people are kind of, this throws them off, but this is the most simplest thing. Once you've already known the alternative pathway, you kind of, it's pretty easy to learn the other two. So the lectin pathway of complement activation uh, is initiated by the mannose binding lectin. Um, so in here, this is just showing a picture of our liver, and this is response from interleukin-6, which is kind of like the primary um, inducer of acute uh, phase response. Uh, acts on hepatocytes to secrete C-reactive protein, fibrinogen for clotting, and then mannose binding lectin. And even though C-reactive protein and mannose binding lectin have uh, different functional or different structures, they uh, actually have very similar uh, ways in which they activate and ways in which they work. So C-reactive protein binds uh, phosphocholine on the bacterial surfaces acting as an opsonin and as a complement activator. And then watch for this here. Mannose binding lectin serves, binds to carbohydrates, which it's a different uh, ligand, on bacterial surfaces acting as a opsonin and a complement activator. So they're both doing really similar things, right? All right, so um, the way that I'm going to talk about this, and then I'll map it after that. So um, the, both the classical and the lectin pathway deal with very similar things. So in this context, it's binding of the C-reactive protein or an antibody, usually uh, IgM or IgG, to a soluble antigen, apoptotic cell, or the pathogen surface. And then we have a molecule known as C1Q, which is a part of, of, of the C1 molecule of, of complement 1, binds to an antibody or C-reactive protein, which is going to activate C1R. C1R is going to uh, make C1S become active, and C1S is going to cleave C4 and C2. And those are kind of the name of the game when we're talking about this. So just like we had up here, I mean, it's like he just like substitutes out the word CRP with, uh, and so this we're saying mannose binding protein to a pathogen surface instead of an antibody or C-reactive protein. But at the end of the day, we have MASP, which stands for mannose binding lectin associated serine protease, meaning it's an enzyme, one and two, uh, mostly just two. We're not really going to focus so much on one. It's kind of boring, but this provides the same enzymatic function as C1R and C1S. We're having cleaving of C4 and then cleaving of C2. So let's look at some pictures. Comparing uh, this compare, compares in mannose binding uh, lectin with C1, complement 1. And they're really, really similar. Long collagenous like structures here. In this case, it's collectin. In this case, it's a triple helix of what assumes is to be just collagen. Um, on either side of this, we have CR1 and CRS. Uh, this has MASP2 and MASP1. Both MASP2 and CRS uh, in the active form are serine proteases um, that are going to activate <laughs> these pathways here. So here we see, um, let's see if I can switch to a brighter color. I'm going to use gold. Activated MASP2 is going to cleave C4 into C4 alpha and C4 beta. Some C4 beta is going to bind on the microbial surface. This is exactly the same thing as C3. C4 is extremely re closely related to C3, not only structurally, but functionally. And so just like we have over here, it doesn't really matter which one I use, C1 here, this context, C-reactive protein here, is going to bind to C1. I'm sorry, C1 is going to bind to C-reactive protein. I don't know why the picture shows it differently, but anyways. <laughs> C1 binding to C-reactive protein on the pathogen uh, activates the classical pathway of complement fixation, but at the end of the day, they're both doing the same thing. In this contest, rather than saying the MASP2 here, it's C1, uh, I believe C1S. But we'll, we'll talk about the details. It's kind of a bit more complicated than that. C4 coming in, and we're cleaving it to alpha and beta subunits. C4 alpha, as you can imagine, is an anaphylatoxin. C4 beta is going to bind to the pathogen surface and act as an optonin. And then the other thing that it's going to do is going to form a convertase. <laughs> so really, this is exactly the same as the all. If you know the alternative pathway, well, you know this. So here's a, a full, I guess, diagram of this whole thing coming out here. So here we see C4 binding. In this case, it's saying that it's, it's the mannose binding lectin. But at the end of the day, uh, structurally very similar, functionally very similar. I could just as easily have drawn a picture or inserted a picture of C-reactive protein uh, and complement uh, 1. 
So anyway, C4 is being cleaved into alpha and beta. Alpha is the anaphyl toxin. Beta has that thioester bond that's going to bind to the pathogen surface. And here we have C2, and this is the only exception to that rule where we have C2 alpha subunit is actually larger than the beta subunit. But C2 alpha works very similar to factor B. So I'm just going to go ahead and just write this up here, that this is similar to factor B, right? And so just like with factor B, we have, if, if we were to exchange this right here, say this is C3 beta, and then factor B beta, the, the larger subunit, which C2 alpha is the larger subunit, what is that? Well, that's the, the alternative C3 convertase. But what is this? This is structurally a very similar molecule, so guess what? It's functionally a very similar molecule. It's going to take C3, it's going to cleave C3 into the alpha and beta subunits. And then we have, just like this, more production of the insoluble or alternative C3 convertase as well. Um, I just really wanted to diagram this picture because I think it points out how similar they are. Yeah, so <laughs> the lectin, both the lectin pathway and complement pathway, um, uh, are have the same type of C3 convertase. They're initiated by, though in this case, saying that the lectin pathway of complement activation is initiated by the mannose binding lectin, um, but they're very, very structurally similar. Oh, sorry. So let's just kind of compare and contrast each and every one of these. So the first one that I want to talk about, I'll talk about him over here, would be the, the lectin pathway. I'll do him in white. So with the lectin pathway, um, so what we have is mannose binding lectin, which, as its name implies, we, we talked about what this does. There's really two parts of it known as MASP1 on the, on the left side of it, and then MASP2. And we don't really know what MASP1 does, so I'm just going to leave a question mark for there. But we know what MASP2 does, and MASP2 is an active, in the active form, whenever it's binding, whenever the mannose binding protein, or sorry, mannose binding lectin, it becomes activated, MASP2 is going to uh, automatically cleave himself and activate himself. This happens upon activation of mannose binding lectin. So MASP2 goes autoproteolysis, which, <clears throat> as its main name implies, we now have ourselves a active MASP2. Active MASP2 does, um, it's, it's an enzyme, so it's going to do th two things. We have C4 going in, and remember that C4 is very similar to C3. It has, that's a carbonyl carbon, by the way, the thioester bond to it. And it's going to go into this active mass 2, which is, I'm just going to say it's an active uh, enzyme, enzyme form. And it's going to come out with C4 alpha and C4 beta. C4 alpha is going to act as a anaphyl, whereas C4 beta is going to be an opsonin. And then it's also going to contribute to the formation of a convertase. The other molecule that we're going to deal with going in here to this active mass 2 is the C2 molecule comes in to that. It's going to be cleaved as well into C2 alpha, which is the larger subunit for some reason. I don't know why they turned it that. And then beta, which just like with the other ones, we don't really know what beta does, the smaller um, fragment there does. But this is a serine protease, and I'm just going to write it out here that it is similar to factor, so I'm going to say that it's factor B-ish. It's like factor B. It's not factor B, it's factor B-ish. And so once C4 beta is fixated on the pathogen, we can have C2 alpha coming in and binding to that convertase here. And what this is going to give us, if I could switch colors, I actually use gold here, what this gives us when we have the C4 beta uh, binding with the uh, C2 alpha so I'm just going to write the C2 alpha, binds with C4 beta, just gives us a unique type of convertase. In this place, we call it the classical C3 convertase. So what does it do? Well, it's a C3 convertase. So right, we have C3 going in and coming out. We have C3 
beta and C3 alpha. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, <laughs> very, very, very um, efficient mechanism here and very, very similar. You know the story once we have a C3 convertase doing this cleavage thing here. Okay, so that's that. Now let's talk about the classical pathway. So whereas with mannose binding, that was the whole part that was involved in the activation here, I'm going to just go ahead and see CRP for C-reactive protein, or we could have an antibody binding here. This binding on the pathogen is going to interact with complement protein 1, and um, on complement protein 1, there's lots of unique things about it. It's this weird, like, bouquet of flowers looking things known as C1Q polypeptide. Anyways, on, on, there's, there's two of each on both sides. And, and what I mean by that will make sense. So there's two of C1S, and then there's also two of C1R. So I'm just going to go ahead and write times two here, times two there. So C1S and C1R in this context, just remember that just like with MASP2, these are inactive serine proteases. I'm just going to say inactive proteases because I don't think it's really important that we know that it's a serine protease. I mean, it is, but not for the purposes of this course, really. Um, <clears throat> so this binding here is going to undergo a conformational change where CR1 or C1R, if you could, I think that's how I heard it. So C1R is going to undergo autoproteolysis. And then after it's it essentially frees himself up, he's going to cleave everything else. Cleaves everything. Okay, so once he starts cleaving everything, he's going to cleave C1S. And C1S is going to give us a, I'll switch colors just to keep it, I guess, clean here, an active protease. This protease taking in will have C4 going in, C4 alpha, C4 beta coming out, and then it also has C2 going in, and then C2 alpha, and then C2 beta. That's right, I'm really small. C2 beta coming out. And, and, and they do the exact same thing. It's, you know, you know the story with these. Um, uh, C4, anaphyla toxin, C4 beta, optinin, and then helps to form the classical C3 convertase with the help of C2 alpha. So the only difference is really it'd be that in the classical pathway, we have a little bit more of proteins being cleaved and activated, which makes sense if this is the third to act. So as you notice, with the first, with the alternative pathway, it was this long dynamic process, but it was actually really, really fast, right? We have cleavage of C3, um, well not C, cleavage of C3, but activation of C3 happening in the blood and then it binds to the pathogen's surface. And it's a lot of C3 and so on. That's why it's the first to act. The lectin pathway adds in one, a couple of extra steps. The extra steps that we have here is the mannose binding lectin, which activates just MASP2, and then MASP2 just really takes it from there. He's going to cleave himself. He activates himself. This all happens through, through the conformational changes of activating mannose binding lectin. But once he activates himself, C4 goes in, C2 goes in, and they both get cleaved into the alpha and beta subunits for each of them. I didn't include C2 beta because it doesn't do anything. C2 alpha is similar to factor B. C4 beta is virtually the exact same thing as C3. It has a thioester bond. It's going to be subject to nucleophile attack, which is going to land on the pathogen service. And once it lands on the pathogen service, factor B, or in this context, C2 alpha comes in and binds to it. And once C2 alpha binds to C4 beta, we have ourselves the classical C3 convertase, which C3 goes in, C3 beta comes out, C3 alpha comes out. And so, so that's, that's the difference between the two. But with this, with the classical pathway, we have to have this guy cleaving himself, which goes over and then activates this in that extra step here, along with the fact that we need a C-reactive protein or immunoglobulins, uh, IgG or IgM binding there. So that's why this is kind of hopefully the, the complexity of each pathway will help kind of lend you to its order maybe, um, but that's how that works.